Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. I have a few reminders to go over while attendees are still joining before we go ahead and get started. We like to keep our webinars conversational and we welcome your questions throughout the, today's session. You can send the questions for Andrew through the Q&A button located on the bottom of your Zoom control panel. We will try to answer as many questions as we can live at the end of this webinar, but if we don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. You can also follow today's conversation on Twitter as we will be live tweeting throughout the webinar at Rio underscore SEO and we'll be using the hashtag Rio webinar. Finally, we will send a link to the webinar recording within 24 hours. So look out for a follow-up email from our marketing team. Thank you for joining. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started for the sake of time. Uh, my name is Chelsea Alves. I am the Senior Content Marketing Specialist at Rio SEO, and I will be moderating today's discussion. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Shotland, CEO and founder of localseoguide.com, and I'm excited to have him here today to discuss the must-know multi-location SEO best practices and how to use big data to take your search strategy to the next level. Andrew, would you like to briefly introduce yourself and your background for our audience today? Sure. Thanks, Chelsea. Uh, so here, I'll just uh, put my intro slide. So nice to meet you. Um, so uh, I have an SEO agency called Local SEO Guy. We've been around for 17 plus years doing SEO for multi-location businesses and local marketplaces. And who cares about that? My big claim to fame is uh, I've done SEO for the Onion and Big Bing Maps, which is always funny to me that Bing needed help getting into Google. Um, anyhow, so why don't we just go right on? Um, uh, just a little pitch here. If you guys want to follow up on this uh, uh, session, have any questions or anything, always happy to talk. And so you can QR code me or whatever when we send you the deck. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot of the research that we've been doing lately on local search and how it applies to multi-location websites. Uh, we have a, a number of large and small multi-location clients. Uh, we have access to a lot of data, thanks to Data by Traject, which is a, a big rankings data provider. They, they've given us all the data to use in these studies that we were doing. Um, so if you're looking for big data uh, rankings, uh, really good local rankings, you can check out Traject. Uh, anyhow, we're gonna, I'm not going to read the whole agenda here. We're just going to dive right into it. So... Everyone uh, is targeting near me queries. Google is forcing people into near me queries. When you go to your phone it, and say pizza, it always says pizza near me, that kind of thing. Um, so we wanted to know, do does targeting near me queries work? I think um, someone from Google a year or two ago said, no, it, it's, it's a stupid, it doesn't work. And we're like, no, no, I don't know. It seems to work. We see a lot of near me pages like this. Um, so, um, and there's a ton of near me traffic. These are just kind of some estimates from, uh, I believe from SEM Rush. Uh, about different near me type queries, so millions of queries a month uh, for these different uh, subjects. Now, when um, we first started near me queries was around 2015 when I stumbled upon this page on TripAdvisor and I noticed they were doing really aggressive uh, near me internal links and near me pages and they were ranking for like every near me query in the, under the sun. Uh, this was 2015. Um, uh, I looked at their page uh, a couple of weeks ago, and in fact, it just looks nicer, but it's the same exact strategy and it's still working. Um, you can see this is an SEM Rush chart um, of top three rankings for this page. And you can see over the last year, um, it's done really well. Uh, I'm not sure what happened before that, but um, uh, uh, it's, it's working. Um, so near me pages at least get traffic, whether they rank for near me queries or something, who knows? So we wanted to do uh, uh, some research on near me keywords and see like, does it work at scale? How does it work? That kind of thing. So basically what we did was we looked at um, queries across 100 cities, uh, 10,000 search results to measure the significance of near me uh, in the results titles of the ranking. So does it show up in that blue link? And does it show up in the title tag of the page we're, uh, we're targeting? And so uh, basically what we did is we looked at 100,000 results uh, and we looked at different cases. Um, like so, uh, and we used a system called Sisu Data, 
which is a um, basically you can put in like a billion data points and it can tell you whether there's certain um, variables are statistically significant. Uh, and so we put in all these different variables. So uh, as an example, does the result contain the city where the searcher is located? Like, does it say in San Francisco? Does it contain the state? Does it contain the city where the searcher is located and the state? Uh, does it contain the word near me? And so here's what we show, here's what we saw um, were significant. So the blue bars are the ones where uh, the factor was significant. So uh, containing the city where the search is located, containing the state, containing the word near me, not as significant as the location information. Um, but what was interesting, or one of the interesting things at least, was in cases where the title tag was really long, so it got truncated, so it was over, let's say, 65 characters or so, um, that seemed to be um, actually have negative or, or let's say not no significance. Um, so uh, it seems like you want to have a shorter title tag for these queries. Um, but basically what you need to do is have title tags that contain the city where the user is located, which is kind of obvious. So that's why it says, duh. Um, Let's go to the next one. So if we looked at all the factors we looked at, um, that at least the top 10 factors that had um, in terms of impact, um, we can see, uh, again, the, um, uh, the, the longer the title tag, the less the impact. Um, and all of these different geo things in, the, in your title tags and on your pages seem to affect stuff. Again, just using the word near me didn't seem to have really that significant impact, very minor impact. Um, so it couldn't hurt to use near me, but it's not it's not um, it's not necessary for ranking for these queries. So just having the city and state is really much more powerful. Um, so um, state without a city has almost no positive impact for most queries, and that's because most queries are city specific, not state specific. Um, uh, you can still, if you have a long title tag, um, you can still rank for stuff. It's just that you might want to err on the side of a shorter one. Um, we looked at things like if it says best in the title, that doesn't seem to have any real impact on it. Um, the word near has small impact um, and near me uh, also has small impact. So it couldn't hurt to use it, but it doesn't seem like it's necessary to rank for these things. Um, so um Basically, what you want to do is um, uh, uh, you want to make sure that um, uh, you're located in that your title tags are targeting um, the distance, like something that's close to where the user is searching. Not kind of obvious, right? If your if your city is 15 miles away, it's probably not as good as if your city is like five miles away. Um, it's really hard to overcome searcher location when they're typing near me, meaning um, uh, when I say um, uh, restaurants near me, it's going to look, Google's going to try to give me lo uh, locations that are within like a couple of miles of me. So if you're outside of that radius, it's going to be really hard for you to, um, you to rank for that. Um, I'm not going to go too into de detail on the near me stuff because it kind of gets complicated, but let's just say near me is, re it's really hard to overcome distance when you're um, targeting near me queries. Um, and so how do you optimize for near me? Um, well, this is uh, the way DoorDash does it. They have a nice restaurants near me uh, link in the footer that goes to their restaurants near me page. It's a national page. It's not a local page, um, but they do have localized content. Um, I'm in Pleasanton, California. Um, so they're geo-targeting that content for me. So Google really won't see that. They'll see best restaurants in Mountain View because that's usually where they crawl from. Um, but if you just do restaurants near me um, and then restaurants near me in the in the anchor text of the link and the title tag, that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, before we move on to other stuff, uh, uh, just a public service announcement. Um, oftentimes when we get into engagements with clients, um, we ask them if their goals setting is accurate in their analytics. And nine times out of 10, it's like, no. <laughs> I don't know what someone set those up 10, 10 years ago. I don't know what they do. Um, it's really hard to figure out if this stuff works or is working unless you have your goals um, accurately set. So please fix your goals. All right. So let's talk about multi-location websites and search intent. So this is kind of a simplified look at the ideal website structure for a multi-location website. You've got pages that capture what we'll call national intent queries and pages that capture local intent. 
On the national side of things, you'll have a national service page like, um, I don't know, uh, restaurants, um, uh, national content, um, and national near me pages. So that DoorDash page would be what we'd call a national near me page, so restaurants near me. Um, national content might be something, um, if you're a dentist, let's say, um, it might be like, does teeth whitening work? Um, because if you search, does teeth whitening work, that's not a local query. That's just like a I just want to know about it. So um, you don't need local pages for does teeth whitening work, right? You need a national content page. On the local intent side, you've usually got a hierarchy of state pages. So dentists in California, city pages, dentist in Pleasanton, um, maybe a location page as an example, if you have multiple locations in a city, uh, and then you might have local service pages. So I'm a tire shop that does brake repairs in this city. Um, and you might have local content um, that's about your particular service in the particular location. Uh, and those, are, there's plenty of other pages you can have, but for SEO purposes, those are generally the, the page types that we're talking about. Um, a lot of times uh, we see sites that still have search only store locators. So what I mean by that is you go to the store locator page and it's like enter your location or your zip code. And it doesn't have a set of clickable links like state city that a user or a robot uh, can get to, to find all your pages. You have to find them via search. We looked at uh, a while ago, we looked in SEM Rush at the top 50 retailers by traffic in the US. And we looked at those that had search only locators and those that had locator plus location pages. So clickable a clickable path to their location pages. And what we found is, in general, those with search-only locators ranked for half as many keywords as those that had these clickable locator pages. So if you have a search-only locator, I would prioritize making your um, adding this locator plus location pages paths to your, to your site. Um, you could probably see a pretty quick win by that. Um, so a lot of times when we're trying to look at strategies, we're trying to figure out is, is there a national or a local strategy required? So as an example, we had a national um, car retailer uh, come to us last year and say they want to rank for cars for sale queries in every city in the country. That was their big KPI. Uh, and they wanted to, they thought they needed to create a page for every location. So cars for sale in San Francisco, um, Hondas for sale in Houston, that kind of thing. And they wanted us to kind of map out the strategy for us. So we said, first, we have to figure out if this is really a local query or not. So we looked at about 16,000 different cars for sale queries across 100 different cities. So um, uh, so these are all like kind of make and model things like um, uh, Toyota Prius for sale in Houston, that kind of thing. Uh, and, um, and we wanted to look at what, what Google was showing us in the results for these queries. And we wanted to check for local intent. And so the way we check for local intent is we look at say, are there localized results in the in the search results? So does it have a local pack? So those list of Google businesses with a map. Uh, do the titles of the results have a city or a state in them? Um, if they have local, if they have local content in the search results, then that typically requires a local page. If they don't, then you don't need to create a local page. It's a national page you need to create. Uh, so we looked at all these 16,000 queries and here's kind of what we started to see. So for car makes, uh, the majority of for sale queries did not have local intent. The way to look at this, this graph is the percent of search results that have local, that, that are local in nature. And we just arbitrarily said 5% was the cutoff. Um, and what we can see is that, um, only Honda had greater than 5% of the search results for uh, that were local. So like Honda for sale in Houston um, or Honda for sale, like all of these basically sent you to the manufacturer sites um, and um, national sites like Edmunds.com and things like that. They didn't send you to a local dealer. They didn't send you to a local pack or anything like that. Um, so, um, so, so right off the bat, we're like, hmm, this doesn't seem like a local search. Um, and then we... Uh, this is actually a different project, um, but we also want to look at uh, who the who's ranking for these queries. And it's pretty easy to see. In this case, this was home services. Uh, we could see that the national searches had a different set of competitors than the local searches. 
Uh, and so it's pretty obvious. Um, you can probably tell if a search is local or national right away by just looking at the local results, whether there are any or not, and the types of sites that show up in the results. Um, so basically, if you're um, if you're looking to target both local and national queries, you ba you basically have to do this exercise to figure out what's the right strategy. And then unfortunately, you have to stay on top of Google because Google might change the intent overnight and say, okay, this is now a local search. So um, so for this client, the the strategy was, hey, like don't worry about building local pages right now. Maybe keep that in your back pocket if we if we decide that um, that later down the line, Google wants to show local pages. But for now, just build a page for every make and model for sale and you're good. Um, but different variants of keywords can have different types of results. So again, in the in the home services um, industry, we looked at, um, we have a client that does home services and we have a client that sells um, appliance repair parts. Uh, so we looked at broken dishwasher and dishwasher parts to see what the difference is in the search results and whether or not, uh, like what's the content strategy for this, for each. And so we assume that there'd be different intent um, for these keywords because they feel kind of different, um, even though they're kind of related. Um, dishwasher repair and broken dishwasher are kind of in the same headspace, but one's a little more action oriented. Like repair seems like I want someone and uh, broken dishwasher is like, show me a YouTube video. So we looked at a lot of keywords across a lot of cities to again, see what was up. And here's kind of what we saw. Uh, in this case, we used 40% 40, 40 localized as the arbitrary cutoff for this. Um, and so what we saw was repair keywords uh, tended to uh, show local results, whereas broken and parts keywords did not. Kind of again, makes sense, but we wanted to prove it. Um, so in this case, uh, if you're targeting repair keywords, you better have city pages, so appliance repair in Houston. And But if you're targeting broken dishwasher or dishwasher parts, you don't really need to have a dishwasher parts Houston. It's not a local query, um, or at least it doesn't seem like a local query. Th this, by the way, is data that shows um, uh, results that contain a map pack. We also wanted to see results that contain the city in the title. And again, the, the data is pretty much similar. Repair seems like it's localized broken and fix and things like that seem like it's um, like it's national or non-localized. Um, uh, uh, we also looked at really specific um, uh, appliances and um, and home parts, I guess you'd call it, uh, to see like if broken plus uh, the appliance name was local. And what we kind of saw was surprising, um, pretty much every category we looked at except for garage door was a local query was not a local query. So broken garage door had a high intent, local intent, but everything else, broken grill, broken router, broken dryer did not. Um, we're not exactly sure why this is, um, other than we think broken garage door is probably a big enough project that you're not instantly thinking DIY um, for this. So you, you pretty much need someone right away uh, to fix your garage door because you want to get into your garage. Um, whereas maybe broken snowblower, you're going to, maybe you, you think you can fix that or something. Um, uh, uh, so anyhow, if you have any other interesting theories, please please get in touch with me as to why this might be. But this actually underscores why we think you need to do this kind of research, because this uh, uh, part site might have gone whole hog into location pages for all these different queries and might have spent a lot of time making a lot of pages that probably won't get a lot of traffic. Um, uh, this was kind of interesting. This this is um, this shows uh, uh, what uh, what results contain a local pack for these types of queries, and we actually saw more parts pages showing a local pack. So um, uh, again, this this underscores that you have to kind of do this kind of research because if we just looked at the city and title research, um, we would have said, okay, just garage door is local. But here it's like, ah, actually, sewing machine. <laughs> parts for some reason is local, um, probably because there's a local store that has sewing machine parts or something. Um, so again, you need to do this kind of research before you decide on your content strategy. Um, I'm not going to go into that because we just kind of talked about it. Um, another case in this is we just did a project for an employment law site that has in 25 cities, 
and has um, practice area pages for every city. So they had um, both 19 core practice answer, uh, areas, uh, so like data breach and separation agreements and things like that, and then 35 sub-practice areas. Uh, so um, as you can see, here's some examples, TSA employee rights and things like that. Um, and they wanted to know, do we need all these pages? And if so, how do what do we put on these pages? And what we found was that um, there were approximately 300 of these pages that targeted searches that had no local intent. So as an example, um, separation agreements is not a local query. Um, it may be a state query, like separation agreements in California or something like that, but it's not like separation agreements in San Francisco is a, is a valid query. So you don't need a location page for that. So the advice was to redirect all of these um, location pages, about 300 of them, to your national version of that page. So your national separation agreements law lawyer page, uh, because that's a national query. Uh, uh, and uh, the good news about that is you can get rid of what we call page bloat, meaning having a lot of pages that get no traffic and have no value to users. Uh, in general, we see when you do that, your, your SEO performance improves. Um, uh, uh, I'm not going to go over the state page, but basically what we found was there were a number of queries that um, that where they were ranking well for a city page um, for state queries. And so the advice there was, hey, create a state page. So if separation agreements, California is a thing, like maybe create a separation agreements, California page. Um, let's now go into um, uh, local service pages and department pages because we see this across the board um, and um, it's an interesting tactic because in theory you're going to get really targeted so Home Depot has a great SEO program uh, and you can see they have on many locations they have three service pages so home services truck rental and garden center and so this is what they're trying to rank for is like truck rental in my city garden center in my city that kind of thing and um it seems like it's really doing well. Um, this is the SEM rush traffic estimate for these pages. Uh, they estimate about 50,000 clicks a month come from just the rentals page. So that seems like a really good investment. Um, but when you strip out any keywords that contain home or depot, what we see is eh, it's really only about 8,000 clicks. So not really for a site like Home Depot that probably gets a millions of clicks a day, it's not really significant. Um, there may be good reasons to not to do these pages because, hey, if I'm looking for truck rentals, I want some very specific information. So it's it's very qualified traffic and it, it should convert well. But if you're looking for tonnage, um, this may not be a good strategy because it's basically going to cannibalize a lot of brand queries that you're already ranking for. So this page, the their Pleasanton page, if it just had the words truck rental on it, probably would rank for truck rental and Pleasanton no problem um, without building a separate page. Uh, so when you're thinking, looking into building these service pages, always think about, am I going to cannibalize traffic I already get, or am I going to get net new traffic? Because usually you want net new traffic. Um, here's another uh, uh, retailer that we work with that um, another vendor, before we got there, created um, 13 department plus city pages for over 500 cities. So that's thousands of pages. And the traffic actually looks kind of interesting. 4 million clicks over, I don't know, a year or something. That's what Search Console shows in this on the left-hand graph. But when we take out brand queries, it's only 66,000 clicks. So all they did was move traffic from one page to another. And so the vendor was kind of touting this as this amazing thing. Um, but when we looked, dug into it, we're like, ah, eh, you know what? It's good to have these pages, maybe. Uh, maybe some of these convert better, but this isn't a net new traffic plan. This is a conversion plan. Um, so be aware of this when you're building these pages. Um, last, uh, or maybe another thing we see is like clients that have a lot of unnecessary pages because they built out, they were like, oh, we're going to go after every keyword in the city, uh, in, this, in the country. So in this case, this is a retailer that has, um, it's a service area business, uh, and it has no, so it has um, uh, uh, no physical location in a lot of cities, but they're, um, I, I'm sorry, I misstated this. They're a retailer that's targeting um, um, service areas. So they're targeting cities where they have no location. So in this case, the example is mattresses near Beaverton, Oregon. They don't have a location there, but they have locations nearby. So they list, they have a Beaverton page and they list the nearby locations in Aloha and Cedar Hills and such. Um, 
we looked at this the these pages there's over 130,000 of them and they get less than half a percent of all the total traffic and that's before we get rid of all the brand queries and about 80% of this site's traffic is brand queries so this these pages get no traffic and our theory is that for retail queries um if you don't have a location in the city, it may not be a good idea to actually have a page for that city because Google probably is biased towards physical locations for retail queries. Service area queries, totally different story, like electrician and that kind of thing. Um, uh, in this case, these guys tripled down on this problem by creating brand pages, local brand pages. So in this case, Serta mattresses in Beaverton and created about 500,000 of these that have virtually no prep traffic. Um, so we are in the process right now of getting rid of all these pages, and we're fairly confident by that by getting rid of these pages, we'll increase the um, relevance of all the existing pages where they actually have locations and improve the traffic. So what are some interesting things you can do with location pages? Uh, the standard things that, that sites typically do, they have the name, address, and phone number, of course, the link to nearby locations, which is great for SEO. They'll put in structured data like local business schema. Um, I'm sure Rio has that stuff out of the box um, on their location pages. And they'll mention their products and services. Um, so what are some non-standard things you can do? Uh, well, linking to your service categories or your, your product categories, your national pages, is like a really easy thing that most sites don't do. Um, this shows uh, targets. Um, uh, pages. We did a big study a year and a half ago for a large retailer across 10 million search results and 40 categories in 5,000 markets. And what we found was like sites like Target that link to their categories tend to do better than sites that don't. Uh, so Target links to video game, uh, video their video game category. And if you look across all these markets, they do really well in local pack results for video game store near me. Um, uh, having market specific content, so reviews from your market piped into your location page, having information about the neighborhoods, especially if people are looking for your, um, have to drive to your location and are looking for it. So near the airport, that kind of stuff is really helpful. Um, having topically relevant images. We were working for a truck driving school last year and they were like, why are all these sites outranking us? We're like, well, their location pages have pictures of trucks. You don't maybe add some truck pictures to your locations. And they did that and their rankings improved pretty quickly. Um, and then if you have um, service pages for your locations, link to those uh, as long as they're relevant and not just cannibalizing your brand traffic as discussed. Um, here's kind of a, a, a high level way that we look at this data. Um, so that study I mentioned, the 10 million search results, um, we looked at a bunch of different categories, in this case, furniture. And we created a metric called share of the voice, which essentially means how are you ranking for local queries and local packs and where are you ranking? And we looked across 5,000 markets and in fur with furniture, what we found was there were really only two sites at a national level that had a significant share of the voice, Aaron's and Ashley Home Store, and everything else was kind of way behind and really kind of mom and pop type players. And so we saw a big gap between the second result and the third result. So that said to us that there was opportunity for our client who was not listed here, that if they went, if they focused on furniture, they could do pretty well. Um, and to top it off, we looked at Aaron's and Ashley Home Store. I hope they're not on this call, um, but we weren't particularly, um, uh, they weren't doing anything particularly aggressive SEO wise. So we thought um, over the long term, our client could beat them if they really focused on it. So you wanna basically be able to do, see this data at scale and be able to look for these big gaps um, uh, and see where the areas of opportunity are. Uh, some goofy things you can do, um, for those of you who have a Google Merchant Center, uh, so you have your um, products kind of connected to your Google business profiles, um, you can look in the local services report in Google Merchant Center, and it shows by location which products get the most impressions and clicks. Um, that's a proxy for customer interest. So, um, if you look at that data, you could basically say, oh, Super Mario Odyssey is the number one 
has the highest click-through rate of all the things that show up on our Google business profiles. So maybe you should put that on your location pages because we know people are interested in it and looking for it and clicking on it. If you put these on your location pages, chances are they will convert at a higher rate um, and get people directly to these products that they've already said that they want. And while we know you know your customers, we tend to think when it comes to search that Google knows them a bit better, at least from search behavior. So um, there's a reason why they're showing Super Mario Odyssey here, because they know the majority of people want it. So that's a kind of interesting little tactic that most sites will not pay attention to because it requires some actual effort. Um, but you may want to, once you've done all the basic things for your, your category pages or your location pages, you may want to look into stuff like this. Um, uh, basically, um, what you, the, my rule of thumb is that um, when it comes to service pages and department pages, if it's eligible for a Google business profile, then it's probably a good idea to make it a sub page. But if not, you might want to think twice. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, let's see. All right, we've got a few more minutes. Um, so uh, uh, neighborhood analysis is pretty interesting because a lot of you, uh, basically the way Google tend to, tends to work is you can rank well within a certain radius of your lo physical location, but once you move beyond that, um, it gets harder and harder. So we wanted to see how we could how we could find areas of opportunity in different radii around your location. So we basically decided we wanted to focus on neighborhoods. Um, and so basically, um, maybe some of you have seen this this grid ranking tool where it shows like how you rank in different different points on a map. Um, really interesting stuff. Um, but it doesn't really give us a sense of what the geography is. And we wanted to tie rankings to specific geographies like neighborhoods to help identify strategies for improving local targeting. So we looked at the lat long information for neighborhoods and cities that our clients are targeting, and we can figure out the centroid and distance to the centroid from our locations. Um, we also have the city limits of the neighborhoods in the lat long, and we can sort of combine it with rankings to prioritize neighborhoods that we should create content for. Uh, and so what that looks like when you take all this mumbo jumbo and put it into something actionable is a map. And so now we can look at this map and um, basically by the shading, uh, dark green is where you rank the best. And then the lighter colors are where you rank the worst. Um, we can start to go, oh, where are their areas of opportunity? So we can show this map to a client and say, where do you want more business from? And they might say something that's dark green. And we might say, well, you're already doing okay there. There's probably not demand for that. Um, but they might say yellow and we can say, like, okay, let's focus on those yellow, those yellow ones because maybe we can move the needle there or the light green ones because we're ranking better. Um, and so the first thing you do is start to add some content for those neighborhoods on your location pages. Maybe even for some clients, maybe even create a page for those neighborhoods. So we're an electrician in, I don't know, Soho. Um, so this is a really great way to visualize where you can put your SEO efforts. Um, all right. Um, uh, we also deal with a lot of um, franchises who uh, basically are often considering, they often have uh, local websites for every franchisee, and they're trying to figure out whether or not they should consolidate them um, into a single website. Because as you can imagine, having a local, a bunch of Local websites usually creates a lot of non-standardization, a lot of overhead, um, uh, just a, a lot of maintenance. Um, and so what we did was we looked at um, how the different websites, the national website and the local websites rank for, for national keywords and local keywords. And what we found was in every case, the national brand site ranked outranked the local franchisee sites almost every time. And these are for non-brand keywords. Um, and so that alone, that data basically gave our client a lot of um, comfort that if they focus, if they basically consolidated into a national site, in general, they would do better, um, not to mention all the savings they would get from having just a single site. Um, we actually did this for a site two years ago called AFC Urgent Care, which uh, I can't remember how many locations, I think like 200 or so. Um, we consolidated all of their local franchisee sites into a single domain, abcurchincare.com, and you can see over time their organic traffic has gone up significantly. Um, the trick for this is you have to monitor the pre and post um, net traffic from all the sites. 
So this could fool you because the minute you consolidate them, your traffic's going to go up because you get all the traffic from the local sites. Um, so you have to understand what's the net new traffic. In this case, they had significant net new traffic. Um, name consistency matters. This is mostly for, um, let's say, yellow pages, local directory type sites, but also works for multi-location sites. We looked at a bunch of different sites where they had listings of business names, and we compared them to the, um, the business names that showed up in the Google business profiles. And in cases where the business names did not completely match the business names in the Google business profiles, the pages tend to rank worse. So if you have, let's say, 600 locations in your, on your business, and you have 600 pages for those locations and 600 Google business profiles, make sure the name, address, and phone number match exactly on those business profiles and on your site, because that will improve their rankings in general. All right. Um, I think I'm going to blow through this because we we're kind of going wrong. But basically what we found was there's, um, there's in terms of some of reviews, photos, um, and various other factors we looked at on Google business profiles, very few of them correlate with high click-through rate. Um, so getting more photos and more reviews doesn't mean you're going to get more traffic necessarily. Um, last thing I'm going to touch on is AI. It's the big topic for the last month. Um, and, um, and we've been building some AI stuff like everyone else, um, in terms of writing location pages, using it, using AI. We just actually did a project for a client where in five days we put together 800 pages, all unique, um, all using AI. Um, I'll let you know how that goes, but a really interesting technology. Um, you have to be kind of careful. Um, about just creating crap um, like you do, whether you're using AI or not, or human beings. Um, and so we have a model for, for doing this. So basically the way we do this is we train our AI on well, high ranking pages in the keywords we're going after and markets we're going after. Um, you have to basically create what we'll call chunked prompts. So you don't want your AI to write a whole page. You want to write a paragraph or a section of paragraph at a time. Um, and then you want to blend in factual data to that stuff. So whatever you have, um, maybe you've done a survey of your locations and you have some factual data, add that in. And then you need to do aggressive fact checking, editorial checking, grammatical checking, um, an AI detection check. You want to make sure that um, it doesn't, uh, that it passes all these, is this written by AI test? Um, uh, and then you want to use human beings to edit it, right? Uh, and so it's not completely automated. It's definitely a process. As an example, to write these um, uh, uh, pages that we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, it took human editors, I believe, two days of work to go through them all and double check them and make sure everything's like cool. So um, you can use it. Um, uh, Sydney, as you may know, is, um, is what uh, the alter ego of the Bing AI chatbot um, uh, 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 I just thought I'd show you like a, my kind of vision of where I think AI for local search is going. Uh, so I think it's going to start to behave like, um, like an IVR tree, um, where you're going to enter a search and it's going to start to take you down a funnel and ask you questions about what you're looking for and where to find it. And then Google will know, let's say, um, Hey, this stuff is an inventory near you and might suggest either, Hey, you could buy this online or you can go to your store and pick it up. Do you want to make a reservation? That kind of thing. I think that's, you can kind of see that in Bing's AI chatbot now, the, the beginnings of that, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that this is where this stuff is going, which is great because this starts to look a lot like search and optimizing for search. Do you have this product in stock? Do you have the name, right name of the product, all that kind of stuff. So I think when it comes to AI, SEO is still going to be the name of the game. Um, with that, um, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, take any questions and comments. Again, as mentioned, if you guys ever want to talk about this stuff, we always like geeking out about it. Feel free to get in touch. Chelsea, all over to you. Thank you. That was so much great information. Um, and before we dive into our Q&A, just a quick note that Rio SEO can help build, optimize, and deploy location pages at scale for multi-location businesses if um, your business is in need of that type of solution. Um, but yeah, let, we have had a lot of great questions come in. I think we'll only have time to answer about two or three, um, and then we can follow up with the rest afterward. But let's see. Um, 
One person asked, is there a specific radius when you use near me in a search? Is it five miles, 10 miles, et cetera, based off of your IP address? It's totally dependent on the query. So um, as an example, restaurants will be really close, um, but electricians may not be um, because uh, one's a service area business, one's a physical location. Uh, so it's totally dependent on that. The interesting thing to note is if you look, do a map search for near me and then you move the map around and you re redo the query, so um, it's going to still use your location to orient the results. So you may be looking for a restaurant near me in your town and then move the map over to the next town. It's going to show the restaurants near you in the next town over. If that makes any sense. Um, we had a couple of questions from Kurt, but we'll ask we'll uh, ask just this one. For national restaurant chains where menus differ slightly by location, would it be worth building a global menu and a lo location-based menu pages? Or is that duplicative? duplicative? My gut is that location-based menu pages might be considered doorway pages as there would be thousands, but curious on your take. So just to be clear, this is like a McDonald's type business where the menu is the same everywhere. And um, uh, uh, I think you can probably get away with a single menu page. I don't know that I'd worry about um, doorway pages. Um, as you probably know, the restaurant space is full of menus. Um, just look at um, uh, Grubhub, right? Um, or DoorDash. Uh, so um, again, you'd wanna look at what's winning in the results before you make that decision. So maybe maybe a local menu pages, <laughs> excuse me, are winning, but. A menu typically isn't a local query. Excuse me, it's um, the business name. McDonald's in Houston is the local query. And the menu will typically be attached to the location page. I bet if I search men McDonald's menu, I just get a national page. I agree. Um, this one's a good one too. Uh, I think just to clarify for the audience is, is it best practice to include the city name in the business name in business profiles for brands who advertise as my brand at X versus listing just as my brand? Um, we like my brand at X. Like, so as you probably know, Google business is like super spammable and names in, um, in the name uh, tend to outperform particularly for like lawyers and things like that. If you're not called San Jose lawyer, you're not going to rank number one for that. Um, or you'll have a hard time. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Um, and just a shout out from someone. They said, great session, no questions, but thank you. So I think that's a testament to this whole presentation. Thanks, Andrew. Um, we had a lot, we have more questions and we will absolutely answer those um, after this presentation, uh, but we're running out of time. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground and we hope you found today's webinar to be useful and informative. Uh, as I said, if there's any questions we didn't get to, we'll make sure to follow up with you afterwards. Um, we'd also be happy to answer any questions you didn't have a chance to answer to ask during this presentation. Um, and you can send that to us at hello at rioseo.com and we will answer those for you. I'd like to thank Andrew again for leading today's discussion and I look forward to partnering together again, hopefully soon on a future webinar or research. Um, he shared, you shared so much great research and insights today. So we really appreciate it. Um, Andrew, can you let people know how, to, how they can reach you if they have specific questions for you or questions regarding your research? You presented today? Sure. And I, I know I kind of raced through it because we had a lot of stuff. Um, so um, hopefully most of the slides have notes in them that are self-explanatory. If they're not, totally hit me up. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, various ways you can get in touch with me. LinkedIn, just send me a message on LinkedIn. I'm on there way too often. If you're following me on LinkedIn, you've probably seen my annoying videos way too much. Um, you could hit me up on Twitter at local SEO guide. Um, and of course, you can go to our website, localseoguide.com slash contact and hit me up there. Um, like I said, uh, we're always happy to, to, to talk to people about this stuff. I, I, I like actually talking about it almost as much as doing it. Um, uh, also, um, we're um, just a, a little shameless publicity. We're um, alpha testing a new uh, SaaS SEO tool for productivity. So if anyone's interested in getting on our alpha tester list, just get in touch with me and we'd be happy to have you kick the tires. It's kind of a funky thing. Um, so that's how you can get in touch with me. 
Cool. Um, and just a reminder to our audience, we host these types of local search discussions every month. Um, and we hope to see you all again for our next webinar. It's going to take place on Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023, uh, where we will discuss how to boost your online presence with Apple Business Connect API. Thank you everyone for joining us today and I hope you all have a good day. Thanks.